Unfortunately, it doesn't look like our unit did so well through shipping. I, I would argue that Flaming River has been building rack and pinions for years. They should expect UPS to throw these at the wall like they hate them. Welcome to the channel. My name is Matthew, and today we're going to be playing with this Flaming River Universal Rack and Pinion. We're going to be unboxing it, measuring, and just kind of taking a gander at all the fun things it's got. Once you get the box open, this is what you're going to see. Every one of these units comes with a rack report paperwork. It basically tells you that the builder and the inspector was the same person, obviously. It's serial number, that it passed all these fun little tests with a nifty little graph. Also, it tells you that if you use literally any pump other than their pump, it voids your warranty. And your warranty is only good for one day anyways. And this form is required if you uh, want to submit a warranty claim. So... Sure. If you order a universal or custom made rack and pinion from Flaming River, it's going to require one of these little guys. They have a very, very strange dome pyramid input for all their rack and pinions, which is a uselessly proprietary part. There is no reason you shouldn't be able to put a 36 flying, 3 quarter inch, or 3 quarter inch double D adapter coming out of your rack and pinion, but that's just my opinion. To hook one of these rack and pinions up, you're actually going to need their fitting kit. At first glance, they are the same threads as pretty much every Fox Body slash Mustang rack and pinion out there. M14, M16, 1.5, yada yada yada. The difference is the placement of the O-ring. So while they may thread into each other, be sure to get this style because this is designed to work with the way their fittings attach. The only other thing in the box are the actual mounting brackets for the rack and pinion itself. These allow you to rotate the unit around to whatever angle you need for the input shaft and bolt it to brackets or K-member or wherever you're mounting it. The inner tie rods are actually threaded to 9 16 by 18. That's more common on the 80s, early 90s Fords. Eventually, as they switch to a metric thread, full width, side to side, I get 44 and 7 8 From the very tip of the steering input shaft to the bottom of the housing, it's 8 and 3 quarters inches tall. From the back of the gearbox to the front cover, it's four and a half inches thick. I say approximately because on the front you actually have the pressure and return line from your pump. And on the other side, you actually have the lines that run over to the piston that pushes the steering left and right for the power assist. Both of the mounting brackets have an overall height of four inches, but they actually space the rack and pinion one and five eighths off of the mounting surface. Each one of the mounting holes is threaded approximately an inch deep and the mounting holes themselves are spaced 1 and 7 8 inches apart. Hopefully this video can help you figure out whether you need a custom or a universal rack and pinion and keep whatever you're trying to steer, steering. <laughs> 